So this series is called JS for C++ developers, and this series is built around the idea of starting from C++, how do you learn JS, and some of the major pitfalls I fell through when I was learning uh, JavaScript. And the first one we're going to look at is JavaScript primitives. So in C, primitives are pretty straightforward. They're a way of telling the compiler what the size of the variable you're looking to make is and how to interpret the data that is inside of it. So char, shorts, ints, floats, and all their derivatives. Now, primitives in JavaScript are a little bit more higher level in concept. We have strings, numbers, begins, booleans, uh, undefined symbols, and nulls. I'll go into a little bit about them later. But what I'm going to spend this video talking about is these two sections. Primitives are data that are not objects, so they don't have methods or properties. And these primitives are immutable data. And these seem like very simple concepts, but if you've ever written anything in JavaScript, it can be unintuitive how these two things can apply when you actually see JavaScript. All right, so just a quick look at the primitives. We have strings around quotes, numbers, you know, just straight up digits. Big ints have an N at the end to signify that these are larger values. Booleans are true or false with a lowercase t and f. Symbols, um, to create a symbol, you just use symbols and wrap something around it or you don't even need anything uh, and then this is just a unique value id and then we have undefined and nulls um, essentially these are in themselves the only instance of these primitives all right to show these in action what i'm going to do is i'm going to open up the console with Control shift i and this will allow us to demo some of these ideas. So what I'm going to do is create a variable called data string, which is going to be a primitive string. I'm going to create a data number, which is a primitive number. And just for reference, I'm going to pull up uh, a data object. And to make an object, use curly braces, property name test. And it's going to be a string. And we're going to create a second property called test2, give it a number. And you can see the difference visually between an object and a primitive because objects are wrapped around curly braces and non-objects are basically not wrapped up in that way. And you can see this in the console. If you just type in data string, you'll see that this object is not wrapped up as if I typed in data object which will pull up a list of the properties that the object has. Alright, so we're just going to clear this. All right. Now, if you want to programmatically tell between a object and a um, just a primitive, you can also do this. You can use the word type of. So if you do type of data string, you'll see that it is of type string. Same with number. And if you do data object, it will just return object. Now, if you've ever seen enough JavaScript, you'll see that these things that seem like primitives also just have functions. So what we can do is we can do data string dot length. We could even do data string dot to uppercase. And if these if these things were truly primitives, how could you go about actually calling properties on it? In C you can't call properties on ints or chars or anything along that lines. And in JavaScript they get around this hurdle with something called type coercion, which is the automatic or implicit conversion of values from one type to another. And this type coercion is easily seen in uh, something you can see visually. So say, for example, 100 if it's greater than or equal to uh, the string 10. 
And what's happening here is this is looking for a number. And so this 10 in string form is getting converted into 10 in number form. So therefore it equals true. So in this case up here, what's happening is this primitive string is getting automatically converted to a different object, which is a wrapped object. A wrapper object allows you to take these very primitive pieces of data and give them the built-in functionality of the functions that are in JavaScript. And you can see this, for example, when we do var, we're gonna call this data string object, and we're gonna give it um, a new value. And then when you type in data string object, oh, whoops, data string object, you'll see that we see the primitive value here, but down in this prototypes, you can see these are all the functions that are actually available to JavaScript or to this string. So what is happening in the background with this data string primitive is when you call the dot, in this case, is method on top of this primitive, JavaScript is basically wrapping it in the background to allow it to have access to all the methods of the string class. So now you know that in the background, whenever you use a method, JavaScript is promoting the primitive up to an object if that's the case, should we just start with objects instead of calling all these primitives? And in most cases, there's no real benefit to this. And in fact, it will just make your program slower. And it comes down to a lot of things, but I think the, the biggest one is the fact that primitives are just very simple compared to objects. And the compiler is just very, very optimized to handle primitives. Um, so there's no, there's no real good scenario to call a new string or new int on something versus allowing the compiler to determine if it needs to be promoted up to an object. The second part of primitive have to be is immutable and and what is immutable is actually kind of a little bit confusing. So when I say that immutable pr primitive has to be immutable, I'm literally talking about the actual values. So in this case, a string value, a number value, the, the actual value itself, not the variable. So for example, like we can take temp equals string, we can make it an, number and we can turn it back into string and all that stuff. So temp itself is changing all the time, but even though temp is constantly changing, it's still always a primitive. So I'm going to show you with a quick example, the ramifications of having immutable data and what that looks like. So we're going to start with a simple example with variable data that points to the immutable primitive sh string test. So a simple example of is if we want to append test and underscore one, two, three, because these two values are immutable. The only thing we can do is internally what happens is it creates a new string that copies this part into here, and then in this part into here, and it will get rid of these two in the background. So if we do this again, we want to append again to this string. We'll have to create a new string that takes this part and this part and copy them into a new string in the background. And just to be clear, what's happening is this also applies to numbers basically. So if you want to point data to four, what will happen is there'll be a space for the value four. 
and if you add four, what happens is it truncates whatever was in data and then replaces it with the value eight. And it's a little confusing at first, but when it comes to numbers, you're never changing the number of the value four. What's happening in the background is data is just dumping the value and replacing it with another one. So because the variables are mutable, but the data is not. So that's basically what a primitive is. Um, it's just immutable data that has no methods or properties because it's not an object. And this is the end of the video. Uh, so if you have any um, suggestions, just leave them the, down in the bottom below.